Welcome to Physics Next Book. In this video, we shall discuss how the Lorentz transformation can be represented as a rotation. However, this is not rotation in the usual sense. Where it resembles, where it differs, and why shall be our main focus in this video. If you have been regular to this channel, you may have come across videos where we have demonstrated that both the space and time axis of a uniformly moving frame make a constant angle with the corresponding axis of the rest frame. Since the rest frame coordinates are connected to the uniformly moving frame coordinates via a Lorentz transformation, in a way we already know Lorentz transformation has something to do with rotation of the space and time axis by an angle. But looking at the Lorentz transformation equations, this is not at all obvious. So let's find out how a sense of rotation is hidden in these equations. Let's consider the Lorentz transformation equations connecting the space-time coordinates of two inertial frames, the primed and unprimed ones. You are probably familiar with these equations, but just for the sake of completeness, beta zero is the relative velocity between the two inertial frames along their common x direction in units of light speed that is v0 upon c and gamma given by 1 upon square root of 1 minus beta 0 squared is the Lorentz factor which acts as a scaling between the coordinates of the two frames. We have detailed videos on the significance of the Lorentz factor and how to obtain the Lorentz transformation equations right from the postulates of special relativity. So let's leave it at that. Now since the relative velocity between the two frames is in the x direction, nothing much happens to the y and z coordinates. So we can safely ignore them and focus totally on the xt sector. As you can see, the Lorentz transformation equations for ct and x mix up these variables. So we visualize it as the rotation of the ct and x axis. This is roughly like the ordinary rotation of the coordinate axis by an angle theta that changes the components of a vector and the new components are made of old components multiplied by trigonometric functions like sin theta and cos theta. So the rotation matrix is made of trigonometric functions and the angle of rotation acts as the transformation parameter. With Lorentz transformations, there is this subtle difference that the angle of rotation is associated not with a unit circle like in case of usual rotations, but with a hyperbola and the Lorentz transformation matrix is made of hyperbolic functions instead of trigonometric ones. To see where the hyperbola comes from, just look at the definition of the Lorentz factor. Squaring it, we see that gamma and gamma beta behave as the two variables in the equation of a hyperbola. The hyperbola being a one-dimensional curve can be parametrized with a single parameter, the hyperbolic angle, let's say theta. So tan hyperbolic theta is beta zero. This means the constant relative velocity between the two frames determines the hyperbolic angle. Scientists have also come up with a fashionable name for this hyperbolic angle, they call it the rapidity. We should also wonder why the ct and x-axis rotate towards each other in Lorentz transformation, whereas in normal rotation, the whole coordinate axis system rotates. This is because normal rotation conserves the magnitude of a vector, which is defined as a sum of the squares of all its components as per the Pythagorean geometry. On the other hand, Lorentz transformation conserves the space-time interval between two events defined by a combination of the squares of the space and time coordinate differentials according to the rules of Euclidean geometry. So Pythagorean geometry relates to a circle, whereas Euclidean geometry relates to a hyperbola. Thus, Lorentz transformation matrix transforming the standard Cartesian coordinates of space-time is made of hyperbolic functions and Lorentz transformation itself can be visualized as rotation of the ct and x axis by a constant hyperbolic angle theta determined by the relative speed beta zero between the two Lorentz frames. It goes by the name rapidity and serves as the parameter of this hyperbolic rotation. There is one big advantage of considering the rapidity as the parameter of Lorentz transformation. Consider two consecutive Lorentz transformations both in the x-direction. 
from our rest frame S0 to the prime frame S1 moving at constant velocity beta 0 1 with respect to S0 and then from S1 to a double prime frame S2 moving with another constant velocity beta 1 2 with respect to S1. The corresponding rapidity parameters are theta 0 1 which is the inverse of the tan hyperbolic function of beta 0 1 and theta 1 2 again the inverse of tan hyperbolic of beta 1 2. The composite of these two Lorentz transformations which can take us directly from S0 to S2 will have the rapidity parameter theta 0 2 which is a simple sum of the two rapidity parameters theta 0 1 and theta 1 2. That is, like the angles of two successive ordinary rotations about the same axis, the rapidity parameters just add up. This simple addition of the rapidity parameters is nothing but the relativistic velocity addition formula. To see this, just take the tan hyperbolic of both sides, use the relevant identity for tan hyperbolic of a composite angle theta 0 1 plus theta 1 2 and bring in the corresponding relative velocities in place of these hyperbolic functions. Simplify and see the velocity addition equation emerge. I think we have done too much math stuff for this one video, so let's stop here. In the next one, we shall discuss light cone coordinates and see how they provide yet another way the Lorentz transformation can be visualized. Hope you have found this video insightful. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.